in progress. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. My dog. My dog. My dog. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> this is the best. Oh man, yo. <laughs> Shock the system. Walter Reigns is always here. Sammy Guevara. <laughs> oh man, what up? Welcome oh, to the dude. Comedians of Wrestling podcast, the podcast where comedians and honorary comedian Nick Tulo <laughs> dissect. Right. Pro wrestling to an unhealthy degree. I am your host, the host with the most viral stand up about professional wrestling, slash, probably the longest set about pro wrestling ever done on network television. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Black. Give it to From me, baby. the Late Late Show, Daddy, <laughs> a.k.a. Dunsky, uh, Black Kimura, a.k.a. Tanakatsu Tony, the Patreon Don, a.k.a. Donnie Capri, from the time I went to Italy. <laughs> to... <laughs> the weekend at Bernie's <laughs> coming at you like Cleopatra, baby, baby, gabba, gabba, wee, gabba, gabba, wee, gabba, gabba, gay, gabba, 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 wee, gabba, gabba, gay, gabba, 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 that girl crazy. is mine, and that girl, she's mine. <laughs> hop, hop, hum. <coughs> yeah, she's mine. Baby! What up, Jabroniacs? We are back in action for your satisfaction of all of our spicy, spicy, muy, muy caliente, chef's kiss, muy, 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 wrestling reactions. Man, the fact that I can still do that. With basically one oh. flub, essentially. You just broke my brain, man. Like, straight up. Because I didn't even say anything to you. But yeah. just with, like, everything that's going on with, like, Corden and, like, I don't know it what was it was. It was time to bring back the intro. I, I it was, was time. Like, yo, yo, I was like, it you was know time. what? There might be some different ears uh, listening to this. And they should get a taste of what it was like. <laughs> and then you broke my brain the second time. Because I went into, like, yeah. a deep dive archive of, like, Instagram posts of like from cow and stuff. And I came across the fucking weekend at Bernie's thing, dude, when we were, I forgot about that entirely. I was, I was recording on my couch on Long Island uh, in my house uh, on my phone and with my like, uh, Xbox gamer headset. Okay. (laughs) Wow. Pandemic when we were like, that was a pandemic thinking we were probably going to die. Yeah, dude. I don't know. Like my life has been an absolute blur. When I think about my life, this is what I think. I I I, I, uh, I, didn't hear, I didn't hear that. That's, that the connection is de- the connection on that thing is definitely trash. All right, all right. You but you heard the music, so why wouldn't you hear that? I don't. It's something I didn't hear. That. <laughs> there we go. Got it this time. Okay, fine. I'm turning it off. Yo, <laughs> one of these chords is completely jacked up. Yeah, but uh, I don't have time to fix it, motherfuckers. <laughs> Yo, here's the deal, everybody. Look. Patreon.com slash means or wrestling support right. this podcast. We need support. We need one new cord. We need one new cord. Uh send listen. Dan 69 cents on Venmo. 
Listen, listen, listen. When we were in that pit, we talked about this on another episode a couple of months back or like two months ago, whatever. You know, post pandemic, everything's been shuffled. Life has been wild, right? My life, I said it. I said my pandemic was pretty fucking rough. Okay. Uh, not to say I had a very, you know what? All things, you know, I don't know. Do I even have to say this shit? Do I have to clarify? No. Some people have it worse than me and blah, blah, blah. We know that. I do. That. You listen, in all things considered, I survived a, a pandemic, so I'm fine. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I had a lot of big changes in my life. Um, You know, I got a divorce, <laughs> which we all know. Um, And now uh, everyone will know on network television. And, um, I, I, you know, I uh, was by myself, away from my family, a lot of changes in my life. So I knew when this pandemic was over and we could start recording again and those floodgates open, uh, uh, performing live again, mm -hmm. like I needed to really get back to that. You know, I put a lot of things, you know, we all had to put a lot of things on hold. I had big plans going into the year 2020, you mm -hmm. know? Um, Calmania was, too. Uh, yeah. How many I, you, which and honestly, some people that said it did have some people. Some people have manifested that it actually did happen. I mean, yeah. Peter Rosenberg wore the Becky Lynch wig and yeah, didn't yeah. even acknowledge it. Uh, you know, they were thinking like it's almost like did that happen? No one really knows, you know. Mm. But yeah, so I knew like coming out of this pandemic, and 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 this podcast was a huge part of that because our show in Vegas, I think, was the official kickoff to me being a comedian again. Yeah. You know, uh, like that, uh, you know, that um, was my uh, comedy debut of of becoming the uh, the uh, honorary Camus. <laughs> yeah, you Hulo, we had a match in Vegas. If you don't know, you can watch the match on the Comedians of Wrestling YouTube page. Uh, you can watch as we wrestled at the space in Vegas. Dolph Ziggler was a special guest referee. Kayla Braxton was a special guest announcer. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, uh, Johnny Mundo. Uh, a Johnny lot of runoffs. Johnny Mundo was there. Luke Gallows was there, but too drunk to participate. Brad Attitude. Yeah, Luke Gallows. He was Brad there. Neil Casey. A choke slam uh, from I want to say yeah. heaven to hell. Uh, yeah, yeah. I uh, I my, I luckily uh, landed uh, on the truly boxes. Unfortunately, the only one that I did land on was my uh, was my left foot, which was an actual case of truly's, which was nice. <laughs> oh but yeah, yeah. That had we to really hurt. Yeah, uh, but Neil Casey, Kevin Kevin Gill, OG. Uh, yeah, so, so many greats. So many of the greats. But Aaron that, Finnerty, Alex Newman, yeah. Cena Calf, Phil uh, Pasapani, the smooth Phil operator. Phil Pasapani, the smooth operator. Um, if you and, haven't and, watched that, if this is your first time listening to this podcast, <laughs> which would be wild. <laughs> Or it probably is actually likely because people watch Corden and then look you up and then see you have the podcast and now they're here. Yeah. Watch, go to our YouTube page and watch the, what was, was that SummerSlam Tacular, right? I think so. Yeah, the SummerSlam Tacular. Watch the SummerSlam Tacular match. It's like 45 minutes of absolute anarchy and hilariousness. I showed it to my friend, my buddy Paul, and he was dying. Oh, by the way, who owns a tattoo shop and his apprentice is MJF's fiance. And at their oh, five year, awesome. at their five year anniversary, I probably shouldn't be sharing this. All right. Don't tell anybody, but at their five year anniversary, MJF was at the party. And that wow, was like let me, the Monday after he won the title the title, which we haven't even covered here. Have we? We um, haven't. <laughs> and which we're gonna, which we're going to get into that. But, so, MJF, could I have more connections to a man I've never met? I, I, I mean, it, his sisters, boyfriend, I mean, that's my that's friend. He's from Plainview. Oh, my whole family lives there. Bro, I'm tattooed <laughs> by his fiance's boss. Like, right. I literally look at this tattoo on my arm. I right was here. supposed to go to the party that he was at, and I had COVID. I've never. We've never. We were. We we're missing. We we're ships. Uh, missing. What do you brother? think I ships told sailing my in the buddy? Night too long? No what do you way think you're I told my that. buddy? I said, I said, tell her she's 100% tattooing and like M something MJF on me. Like, that's going down. Well, can we turn that life rips into like uh, something Recall. like Recall. She can cover it up with l life <laughs> MJF rips. Well, are you back on the Chris D'Elia train? No. Oh, okay. Um. Anyway. Nah. So, 
point is that we came out of this pandemic. We had a great time. And then I knew in my heart that I needed to get to doing comedy. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? And, uh, yeah, so I set out to perform, and and, and I started these shows. And uh, one show I started, I was like, okay. During the pandemic, I said, I'm never going to, probably not going to do improv ever again, is what I've said. I've been trained for people, new listeners. I've studied at UCB for a long time. I toured with Upright Citizens Brigade, you know. Uh, I would say my training is improv. It's my, you know, my biggest comedic training. And uh, I was like, you know, I'm probably never going to do improv again because I, I just couldn't even see how improv could happen at that time because it requires all these people on stage. You're watching these stand-ups who can, like, do stand-up outside and they're, like, swapping microphones so they don't got to touch each other, you know, during the pandemic. Yeah. The, the, the heart of the pandemic, you know, and they do it, you know, and you're like, well, with improv, like we ha- we have to be on stage all together. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, I don't know, is that going to exist again? Like, it was so, it's so weird to think back, you know, and then like. And then. Uh, I was like, oh, I started this improv show and it's been a fucking awesome social show, Atlas improv show. And boy, oh boy, I'm, I'm doing some of the most satisfying improv shows of my entire life now. <laughs> You know, and I then, can't wait to watch the the the, the last one because it's still available to stream. I'm gonna actually watch that tonight. Yeah, you can stream it at dynastytypewriter.com. Our last show we had Seth Green on it. He did the monologues, which was really fucking fun. He was the man. And then our next show has Seth Rogan on it, December 10th. And then um, uh, the and then the January show has Seth Rollins, right? Seth Rollins. Well, here, so okay, so let's talk about Seth Rollins for a second. So, okay. So anyway, that being said, with st- uh, a stand up, I, I was dead set on doing like late night television. I really wanted to like, you know, do stand up on TV. I've always thought I was going to be a stand up. And then I got into the like improv world. Um, and not, that doesn't say like, I regret that or anything. It's just, that you could only do so many things. And I'm a guy who wants to do anything it, 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 to the point that right now I, I, <laughs> right now I like, I, t- I you know, I, I, at night I take little guitar lessons. You know, I've been hey. neglecting, neglecting it a little, and I, I, I have this idea of this show I've been working on. I've already started working on it for next year, like, a, like a rock show, a rock comedy show. You know, Amazing. and like, like I, I have to do. I, I can't spectate. Like, I need to touch. I need to taste what yeah. it feels like to do things. You know, and so, but stand up's always been like so deep in my bones. Like when I was a kid, I was like gonna be a stand up. I was obsessed with stand up comedy. You know, and I veered off from it because. Essentially, I was trying to be on SNL, and I was, you know, with improv. It, yeah, yeah. it was like, you know, uh, I was auditioning for SNL, and I didn't get it. Everyone, you're all getting my history, and I didn't get it because, uh, well, I just didn't get it, but I was focused more on characters and impressions, and that's the stuff they wanted from me, you know? Mm-hmm. That's not really a great recipe for how to get things. It's like just by doing what someone else tells you to do and not following, like, your artistic heart, yeah. you know? So that's kind of like when I when I came out of this pandemic, I was like, I'm going to follow my – like what my what my my uh, artistic passions are and, and what what and comedic passions and it's amazing because it's what's cool it's I don't know why I'm going all hippie with this is that you, you can't really control what you want to do I mm-hmm. think that's kind of awesome you're like guided by your what whatever term you want to call it you know what I mean because I'm not a, I'm not a very spiritual person too though we've talked about this you know. And not, that. And not classically spiritual in the sense that, like, I know what a chakra is or blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? <laughs> not like that. But I'm like, but, but I know that, like, if I, I'll watch, look at something and be like, that doesn't interest me. Right? Like, like so many people are so drawn towards, like, like RuPaul's Drag Race. And I've never really been drawn towards that. Right? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I might like it, but it doesn't draw me towards it. It's like, oh, I don't know. It's just I, I, I don't know what happened. My eyes didn't go towards this. You know what I mean? Like Shebs and loves you know, RuPaul Drag. Right. Like that's just an example of something that like I haven't had much interactions with. You know? But like I was like, oh, always drawn towards stand up. So I worked on it, and I've been working on this set, and uh, I finally, you know, I'll, I'll cut. I don't need to tell you the whole journey of it. But I did stand up comedy. It's debuting. Uh, uh, I, I doing my late. It's called like a late night stand up debut tonight on the late late show with James Corden. Um, Woo. I shot it. I filmed it yesterday. I think it went pretty well. I mean, hopefully, you'll have the same opinion of it. You know, it's all subjective. But the cool thing for this podcast, you know, and that and that, and that was dope. And it's and and uh, um, um, 
uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm umming and aahing a lot, but I, the cool thing for the longtime listeners of this pod is that a joke that did make the air is the, my LeBron joke. Um, it's a joke that they really loved and really wanted in the set, you know? Yeah. And it's, I, I, it's for, for all my marks out there, all my wrestling fans out there, it is what a fucking absolute honor to go on broadcast television and just announce that I don't like sports and I defend <laughs> pro wrestling, you know, like to just be like, eh, it's not for me. Oh, fuck like, up. Yeah. you know what buckle, I mean? Buckle and, up, and I'm, and I'm wearing, we like a, I'm wearing like a leather jacket, you know, and that, you know, and like just being like, yo, sports are lame, bro. And it's funny. I just find it's like funny because I, 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 I didn't think about this truly till after, but it is so interesting to go on television and essentially defend pro wrestling while looking like such a guy who would be in sports, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, but you also like teased uh, to be on the show and you're in a Ric Flair robe and your undies and looking like you're ready to fucking go out there. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> you guys all see this, or whatever, but it's, it's like on the, what? it's on the, it's on their Instagram. Yeah, Corden so. posted it, but so um the uh, um they po- I didn't even have video of that. They posted it, and then I quickly DM'd, I quickly DM'd the late late show Instagram account, and they happened to see it and send it to me. You know, like whoever runs it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> anyway, so I uh. Yeah, like, so they have a thing at the top of the show. It's called, like, James, like, checks in with the guests. Yeah. So, essentially, like, they knock on the door, and they're like, hey, let's see who's here, you know? And it's really fucking cool because they include the comedians the same way they include the other guests. So, like, yeah. on the show is David Harbour and Sarah Highland, who are objectively way more famous than me. One, <laughs> she was on Modern Family. He's, like, one of the top actors right now. He's in the, the Violet Knight movie right now, and he's on fucking Stranger Things, you know? Yeah. So, um, uh, he was a superhero in, uh, Scarlet black, black, black widow. widow. Yeah. So anyway, I had, go, I had to go deep into my brain for that one. Yeah. I actually didn't see that one. Was that one good? <laughs> she was saying Scarlet cause it's Scarlet. Joy. It's Scarlet. Joy. It's Scarlet. But, and there's Scarlet witch I'm to my, it. to my defense. There's the Scarlet. I'm my dick suck. My Scarlet. Joy. <laughs> <laughs> The past, <laughs> in the past, not now or anything. That was a long time ago. Well, that's a reference to a, a, a summer spectacular. So anyway, uh, so they not so they check in bit. They knock on the door and look. It, this is not, I'm not like reinventing the wheel here. Like other comedians have like knocked on the door and then they do like a goof. You know, mm-hmm. I I, <laughs> I had randomly had always been like, if I ever done Corden, I would be dressed like a pro wrestler when they open the door you know (laughs) and so like first off so i had this bit and the bit essentially is that like i challenge james to a match and then he's like no dan you're supposed to be doing stand-up man you know like on the you know (laughs) and like you know that's in my mind what he what he does you know and then and then i'm like oh shit yeah no yeah of course i'm stand up yeah yeah that's no problem of course i do that you know (laughs) of course i do that i'm excited to be here you know but so like that but like so i i meet james for a second and i'm like hey man just you know i get this bit i was thinking about doing like at the top and he's like no 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 don't tell me it's always better when you don't tell me you know <laughs> and i'm like all right but i hope he gets like what i'm doing yeah. like i hope i hope and like bro by the way it's pretty clear you know like to his credit it's yeah. pretty clear, and he's a fucking smart guy, great. You know, he's like a mega talent. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. So, so what I did is that, like, so I had Christina in my dressing room, and they say they're like, they're like, all right, they're like, you, you can't bring any actors because we're not gonna like pay actors for this like yeah. small little bit here, you know? Yeah, yeah. And they're like, but you can have like your guests with you, just dressed in their normal clothes, and they can't say anything, you know? Yeah. So, so, so Christina 
it's normal. We had Christina. She's her normal clothes is like dressing like a ballet. Like, and it's pretty close to what she normally wears. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Christina, you know, and also because we do shows all the time. So, like, Christina's kind of always like in show mode, a mm -hmm. showgirl. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I. Uh oh, there she is. I was saying how they said they they said that you shouldn't. Uh, Christina's here. She's in show mode now. And anyway, so we, I'm recording. Okay. Anyway, all right. But I bring my phone back because I, I I have stuff in there that I need. Ha ha ha! You're recording so I can go through all your text messages and see who you're schmexting. Hi, Tulo. What's up? Anyway, so it's good thing we, they didn't let her speak last night, so that was good. Oh, no. <laughs> so Christina shows she shows up and like we had like a pink tube top and like pink and like pink like I don't know tube skirt. I don't really know what it's yeah. called. You know what I mean? And <laughs> we just like the roll up. We get the roll from? like that. And I ordered this roll. I'm like, yo, I'll just wear trunks. What? So I'm wearing my cow trucks I wrestled, and then I ordered like a Ric Flair robe, but just off of Amazon. Yeah. Well, so I had a couple options. I had I ordered like kind of like a like a Gargano vest. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. You put it on, and like it's funny because it, it doesn't read as pro wrestler. No. You know what I mean? Like, like it, it's modern pro wrestler to like us marks will be. Like, that's what a pro wrestler wears, you know? Yeah. But like for camera, it's funny. The only thing that reads this pro wrestler is like Hogan or Macho stuff or Flair. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I like last minute ordered this like fucking Flair robe. And then I showed it to like the, when I got there, I was like, oh, I'm going to wear this. Is that OK? And they just are laughing their asses off that I just have that, you know? And so the other wrinkle here that I think is really interesting was that Ziggler was supposed to come and stand next to me, you know? Oh. And it would just be like, not we don't acknowledge it. It's just Dolph Ziggler's just there, you know. <laughs> and we couldn't pull it off because of he was he you know he was coming in that day. But you need to get a, it's fucking COVID ruins everything. Like he needed to get a COVID test forty eight hours in advance, and he's in Phoenix. Has to be from like a has to be from a like uh uh uh, uh an accepted place. It was like a whole thing, you know. It's like it's not, it's not their fault. It's like union rules, you know. Oh, that's oh like a. Did you have to do that too? Yeah, I I get a P they have to come to my house and give me a PCR test on Monday to shoot Wednesday. That's wild. Yeah, I mean you live in Texas. It's like gates. It open, doesn't even right? exist like it doesn't even exist down here. Anymore. Oh yeah, yeah. That's I mean, this is a TV studio, you know what I mean? Like no one even talks about it. I think it's to be honest, I don't really know, you know, that yeah. So anyway, I did, so I couldn't get Ziggler to do it, but he was in town and ready to do it, and I couldn't do it. So I, I was trying to get, be flanked by, like, all of my wrestler friends, and we just couldn't make it happen. But you guys know that that was, like, it was planned. They were all down. I just couldn't make it happen, you know? Yeah. It sucked. But anyway, um, but, yeah, so I put on my, like, right, so right before we're going to do the bit, and it's like everything's, like, run and gun on these TV shows because it's a live show. So it's not just like, Dan, are you ready? It's like, we're going. Yeah. You know? Uh-huh. I'm wearing the cow trunks. Last second they see the logo and they're like, you, you gotta flip that. So like right before the camera goes, I take my I'm go fully naked. Like the there's like live cameras like right there. And take them and flip like flip them, like flip them inside out and roll them up, you know, like over my and then you see that's what you see on camera, like there's a little bit of print coming out of the like tops, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then it was great. Corden, you know, did the bit, but like we just improvised it and it was pretty fucking funny. You know, it's just like, you know, you know, he, he played along perfectly. He's like, let me check. Is this Dan? Like, I think Dan, you're booked into the stand up. Like, what are you talking about? And he's like, you, you, you like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm, of course I knew. Like, stand up, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. I, know. <laughs> I, 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 I got jokes. I'm like, this was a joke. This was a joke. You know what I mean? Like, it's like that. It's like awkward and funny yeah, and, yeah. and silly. I love it. It was a good time. But it was like hilarious because they were like, they don't tell you to bring one of those check-in bits. You know, like they don't tell you like you, you hey, if you want to do something up there, you have to be very proactive. You'd be like, hey, I'm thinking about doing that. And then they gotta like be like, Yeah, we like that. Like, you know, yeah. 
Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to be dressed like a pro wrestler. So I'm glad I did it because I was like waiting for them to be like, hey, when do you want to check a bit? And I proactively like reached out. But anyway, it's fucking awesome. You can see it on my Instagram now at Dan Black Attack. You could see uh, like a small like snippet of me when they open the door and I'm wearing a robe. And it's so fucking satisfying to look at, you know, it's amazing, dude. So, yeah, it was really, it was awesome to do the set there. It's very, you know, ner- it's very nerve wracking. You get like one shot at it. You're doing yeah. stand up in front of, you know, I mean, there's nothing else to like go into about it. You guys can watch it. You know what stand up's like. But it was a big milestone for me to, um, um, you know, uh, to to do, obviously, like, you know, in, in the stand up world, like doing getting your late night debut. It's 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 a classic. It's a it's a classic um, step in the in, in the in the in the uh, career of a stand-up comedian, you know? Yeah. And it's kind of like a dying thing because, like, late-night shows, who even knows? Like, will they replace Corden when he leaves with another late-night show? Who knows, you know, as yeah. it all changes, you know? It, it, this isn't like the Carson days where it was like you would do that and then it meant you're famous, you know? Yeah. But it's, it still it's, fucking matters. You know, it still mattered to me and, and a bunch of people. So it was, it, it was awesome. Anyway. Is wild. Um, that's man. really all to say about that. But I thought you guys should get a little insight behind the scenes of the wrestling elements of it. You know, what so, did uh, Seth Green say anything about wrestling? Oh, here's the other thing. Yes, he did. And then the other thing was that. So I get off stage and I'm walking to the back, and it's all kind of a blur. And then the, one of the guys is like taking my mic. You know, he's like a yeah. And he's like, bro, I love the Seth Rollins joke. Uh, like one of the guys who works there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, <laughs> that was great. Amazing. So my thing is like, we got to get Rollins to see this. You know, I mean, at this point, Rollins has got to be like, yo, I, I, I think he has seen it. Did we confirm that he has seen that joke before? I mean, all I did was post it. The last time I posted it was just me posting like a random clip of it, you know. um, Literally, I posted it on Facebook, remember? Yeah. Fucking Facebook. Dude. It went- now, like, Facebook and Twitter are dead, right? <laughs> What's going on, Tula? You're more of a Twitter guy. What's going on with Twitter, like? Uh, not not in the sense of like I know the news headlines of it, but the Twitter verse is it still rocking or what? Is that stuff blown out? It's like you don't really know. Mm-hmm. I know but like you're still signing on there every day. Are you still? Yeah, but I feel for like more informational purposes, like like sports and stuff and shit like that, and wrestling news and things like that. But like I'm gonna I'm gonna find myself like interacting way less, you know. Right. You, you'll use it more to get, like, news? Yeah. I, well, I also have, like, really given up on, like, commenting on stuff as, like, not given up, but, like, I'd rather post my own takes and put that out there. But, like, I, I don't really reply on stuff as much because that's, that's like, what Twitter's all about. It's, like, you, like someone wants, has a reaction and you get, you say something with that reaction. And then it gets into this whole heated thing. So I've learned to just kind of, like, observe you know <laughs> now and that's what yeah. i like about it but it's like it's all right i mean i mean all social media is kind of feels like to me i'm not a tiktok person but it seems like tiktok is a big thing <laughs> but i feel like all social media is kind of like starting to hit the like hit a wall a little bit you know uh yeah i don't know you know i don't know what to say about it i mean I, my most of my conversations about social media are are in the context of comedy, especially yeah. now nowadays for me. And the big thing is like comedians posting clips, you know, mm. and that's like a big point of conversation now in the stand up community where it's in comedy community where you're like, you know, it's like you have to be like posting clips. Now it's like people, <laughs> you know, it it, it kind of used to be where it was like. Get your stuff, put out an album, put out an hour, uh, do a late night set, right? Like yeah. I, I was in this weird spot where it was like I was starting to post clips. I posted one that I got like captioned. You know, I was like, all right, I'm yeah. gonna start doing this. And then I really started heating up with working on my cordon set with with them. And I was like, all right, well, I don't know which I don't want to post any jokes that I'm gonna say, you know? Right, right. So right. I have like so you know, because then you're like, do, do they, you know, do they not want, do they not want you to post stuff? You know what I mean? Like, you're like, right. oh, no, you know, do, do, do they, they want you to be a joke that has. Well, I mean, now this day? all turns into clips for you. So that's the best part. Like, the idea right. is that there's going to be a bunch of people watching that and who 
watch professional wrestling and are gonna fucking share it and it's gonna you know the idea is we're it's this is like like a marvel movie like we're going viral again like this is like hot yeah. tub time machine or something <laughs> what's going on well i'm saying it's like it, it you know it's yeah it, it it's it's kind of a beautiful thing for me because it's like like so, you know oh man social media i don't know why we're going down a social media rabbit hole but i'll say like for me it's cool for example the last clip i posted was i posted this joke about the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial being in a toxic relationship, you know, yeah. and I posted that clip where I'm like, oh, you know, uh, I'm in a toxic relationship, but I didn't realize until I watched the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. that I was like, yo, can you believe that she shit in his bed? And I was like, <laughs> I could get there. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you don't, you're, you, you don't uh, understand relationships I mean, like that. And so I post that clip. And then, and you know, it got like, forgot, I don't have that many followers. So I got like 25,000 views or something, yeah. you know? And, uh, um, you know, but like for that joke, it's like, well, to be able to just put that out right away, cause it's kind of timely, you know, cause it's uh -huh. based on that, that, and to just be like, I told it, I like the way the clip turned out. I'm going to post it and that makes it done. That's kind of beautiful for a comedian. That's so like it. I'm I'm learning to embrace the fact that like you know I did the late night thing and I'll do more t TV tapings and whatnot but like I can't like I, you know like like the the wrestling joke I've been sitting on for a couple of years you know to uh, to do it on TV and you know and you're like I don't want to do that anymore you know yeah. I mean I, I'll end up doing it obviously but I don't want to do that and if I don't have anything on the horizon so it's nice to have an outlet for these jokes you know. Turn it into so a little brainstorming it. session here, but do you have someone who does video at uh at Last Improv and Comedy Poll? I have video. Yeah, I have I have, I have video. In. I'm saying, you know, I I'm working on I'm working. On, it's my next thing. I'm gonna be working on the next year. Is like for 2023 is like clipifying, you know. Yeah, I mean, and I've already yeah. spoke to the cast and stuff. But yeah, anyway, you all right, whatever. Get... We can move on. This is the logistical shit, but yeah, fucking, I uh, I uh, you know what? Thank you guys. Well, here's what I guess why I bring it up to say to the Calverse, you know, like a lot of you have been listening to this podcast for a long time and probably like, you know, I, I'm not, you know, we, we acknowledge this two, two months ago, probably whatever. But like, I'm, I understand that like we used to go way harder with this pod because we had way more time and resources to throw at it. You know what I mean? But I, I hope that the long-term listeners understand that like I'm taking the momentum and the energy that we like built here, you know? And taking it fucking, let's just call it metaphorically worldwide. You know what I mean? Even though, truthfully, it is literally worldwide. Because you know what I mean? There was a while where, like, yeah. the LeBron joke, you guys know the joke, my my joke defending wrestling, was kind of ours. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we all were like, shit, Dan posted this joke, and, like, it went viral for us, and it was exciting. Yo, and remember then the, Facebook, the, making... the, the Facebook group, like, went, like, in, like we like got so many people that came onto the page and it was like it was like a thousand people in a day joined the yeah. facebook group we were from like that trying joke. to control it i was like what the fuck is going on uh, yeah that joke so then I, I posted that and then and then i did like the half hour we put out on youtube like that was a fucking blast, adult wrestling you know? fan right yeah adult wrestling fan and like that and then i was like you know just like talking about how much i love wrestling because i thought that'd be a cool project and then all that to culminate on cbs for a long term listen like that joke. Obviously it's only I only had five minutes, so I can only tell the chunk that little chunk of it. But I think that's pretty fucking cool for like people, you know, like the long term listeners. Like it's just know, wild. I, I mean I, it's wild like, to me. There's people that were at that show that still listen to it that heard that joke, you know, like that's so it's crazy to kind of think about. But when you went viral, that the clip wasn't from adult wrestling fan. It was, yeah, it was from no. the, it was before it was that a show I did like at UCB randomly. It was probably one Wild. of the first times I told it. And here's the other thing about, is it is like, I, I think that joke is a joke. Everybody knows. I'm like, I'm like, you know, in my mind, everybody knows yeah. it. Obviously not true. And you're like, almost no people have seen it. No, never. <laughs> almost none. So it's like a weird thing where I'm like, should I tell that joke? I mean, it's old already. You know what I mean? In my mind. And then I'm like, no, I'm it's, like it's I'm new to an, so many people, you know. I'm having an internal struggle if I want you to uh tell me what you did for the sport like change up this time or if you I want to like be surprised when I watch it and hear it live. You know cuz you usually do you you the last couple times you've done the like 
Suns versus Bucks or something like that, you know, like or some, no, I just say know. Golden State Warriors, Boston Celtics, because that's who won. That was who it was. <laughs> <laughs> that's who it was. Oh, you did, yeah, it, yeah, uh, yeah. you did the Warriors and Celtics. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, from last year. Yeah, so that's yeah. what I'm saying. You adapt every year, you know? Yeah, I adapt yeah. every year. And then also, there's another chunk I took out because the the whole chunk about Wayne Gretzky or whatever, like, I took that out because just for time. Like, I and it was like, all right, I don't want to stay in wrestling too long, you know? And then I go into yeah. talking about uh, being divorced, which I think was really fun, too. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> what would I say? I will, you want me to spoil it for you or no? No, 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 no. No, no, no. Hopefully I say it right. It was all a fucking blur. Anyway, so w- wild for the long cowheads, the full on jabroni X. What a wild journey for that joke, you know, and cool. And I don't really have control. It's a joke they wanted, you know, so cool. I have some level of control, by the way, but like, it, you know, they like tell you what they want, you know, and you're like, you don't fight with them because you want to get approved, you know? Yes, cool. you can have the wrestling joke. Uh, <laughs> all right, too low. I think it's time. I mean, we should move on to talking about wrestling. What do you think? Or did you want to talk about something else? Um, I'm fucking Gucci. Let's go, baby. I got a lot to talk about. Well, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, I've so here's my experience. I've been so fucking busy. You yeah. know, that's why we missed last week. I've been so busy because I was dealing like just give me an example of the stuff I was dealing with. I, I like. I, I like once they wanted to like standards and practices want to cut one of my jokes, you know? Yeah. And then I had to like stand up for it and like that. And also like all the people caught him were like on my side, helping me. It was like, yeah. so many curveballs. Then like I had an outfit and then it was like, shit, these pants are too long. I had to get them like double altered, you know, <laughs> like that. And then like, I'm like, you know, I like, I was By the like, way, oh, Al- like- outfit. Incredible. Great job, man. Where'd you get that jacket Wait- from? Oh my god! So uh, I guess we're still on this, but no, you look you know, great. I mean, the well, shoes. Was all right. Was. So the shoes. So okay, the shoes. All right. Let's. Wh- where should we begin? Funny things that Fucking I always said Ambrose to myself. Looking motherfucker would, out here, yo. So that's what I would say. I mean, I Are felt ye? like that. I not, that I have a fucking full on a- Ambrose vibe. Like I felt like I had full Ambrose vibes. <laughs> you were like the proper Ambrose. <laughs> You were like, yeah, you were like Dan Ambrose. <laughs> Yo, Sheb said that I looked like I was auditioning for Gone in in 120 seconds. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <that's> right. <laughs> Let me tell you this. Okay, let's talk outfit. You know, I mean, so I mean, first of I, all, I, I uh, we're joking about, it, but you looked great, man. Honestly, you you like did you dig the outfit? I, I'm not sure. You look great. I like it, so I I like it, so I, I think it's all great. good. Yeah, I, so here's the deal. Let's hear it. I was always like, if I'm going TV, I'm wearing like a leather jacket to do stand up. You know what I mean? Like, it's just kind of like, you know, like I'm a guy, like, I've always think that was the fucking coolest thing ever. Like, Dice yeah. is like my hero. You know what I mean? Like, so to me, and, you know, to me, I was like, yeah, I have a leather jacket, you know that. So I had, weirdly, I had, I don't remember when, but, I had passed in All Saints one time, and I kind of went in, and it was like, man, if I do, when I do stand-up on TV, I'm going to rock one of these jackets. <laughs> Have you been to the store All Saints? No, never. It's like, it's like if, if Chris Angel manifested a store, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Light as a feather, stiff as a board. <laughs> it's a Chris Angel plus Dean Ambrose. And so uh, when in, like, I, I actually was trying on a bunch of jackets. They look good. Like, they were not uh, All Saints because I would just happen to be in a department store. And then I went and then I put on All Saints. I was like, yep, this is exactly <laughs> what I'm looking for. Anyway, I put on, you know, uh, and that was it. So, so I just always knew I'd rock it, you know. But here's the debate. Like, for a while, I was like, yo, can I pull off, like, the wife beater underneath? You know what I mean? Like, can I pull off, like, a tank? You know what I mean? Like, should I just, like, I'm like, this TV movie, no. should I just fucking go for it? You know what I mean? And ultimately, that is just too crazy of a movie. You would have looked like, you would have looked 100% like fucking Dan Ambrose. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like the shirt. But, like, th- this was the shit I was dealing with. Because it's like, yo. All right. Like, yo. Like, Pitch Burst is perfect, Skylar asked him. Yeah. Okay? By listening to this. Like, I've been with Skylar before. Like, people are giving him clothes to wear. 
You know what yeah. I mean? Uh -huh. You know, he, he's, 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 you know, there's, he's, there's stylists in the works and, 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 oh, yeah. and by the way, when you're like going on, you have like a TV appearance or something like it's that nothing more helpful than that. It's a necessity because yeah. like you're trying to be creative and focus on all this other shit. Thinking about outfit. I mean, who? <laughs> I got no space for that. Look like, at because his Instagram. Also, I don't have yeah. that skill. I don't even have that skill. Like to be like, how could you look at me? Like you're just going to look good. But in my position, I had to like do it myself, you know? So I, ha I have, you know, I had those jeans. I wore them once. You know when I wore those? I wore them literally one time. They're brand new jeans. I wore them in Vegas after we went out. <laughs> like no. uh, the night we went out before the show that night. Which was like the I dumbest think, idea. Oh. It's such a dumb idea. What? We went out to like fucking like five in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we produced the show. I was so dead. That is the only night I wore those jeans because they're like, they're nice because they're like kind of uncomfortable. And what I don't like, why they? would I? Uh, uh, Sorry, uh, Buck no, Mason. I'm, you know Buck no Mason? Judge. No. No, no, no. Buck, Buck Mason's like a, a good store here. Um, cool. Yeah, they're, they're, I just don't know if wow. they have them everywhere. They have one like here. They have one. In, I feel like California, like LA is a different country. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Buck Mason and what was the name of the chat? <laughs> All say, all say. Oh shit! Whoa. Uh oh. We we are, we're always good for one. I think he might have unplugged. Uh, no. Back, hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. I literally, it, it, like it. We're on I must fire. have pressed the yeah. I must have pressed the turn off button, but I saw it. Like it just turned off my thing. Anyway, yo, so um, the All Saints, Buck Mason. <laughs> so anyway, I just start Buck Mason. G Google it. They make nice okay. stuff. It's a nice place. Um, they make a lot of my my shirts. But so uh um, I had those jeans, and I got them short, but they were. I guess I kept them long, you know. Yeah. So anyway, the, the point is, I, my shoes were Vince. You know Vince. <laughs> you don't know the brand Vince, bro. And then, all right, then the, the, <laughs> here's a wrestling tie-in. My shirt is Theory. I I, I know Theory. Okay. Oh, it's a theory. But the, Vince, here's the crazy you know, thing. Vince, so I got Vince this jacket. Theory? You were like, wearing yo, Vince and Theory? It's Vince and Theory. Oh, my God, bro. And, uh, and the Buckshot Lariat. And, uh, and, <laughs> and uh, the Archer, of of it, Archer of Infamy jacket. That's fucking insane. Yeah, the, I wore a Vince and Theory. So they obviously those two things go together very well. Yeah. Um, this was my cash in. But so I um well, here, here's here's the thing. Like, I'm like, okay, cool. I I'll, I got this leather jacket, it looks awesome, you know? Mm -hmm. And then and I, I'm trying to I'm actually getting a shirt underneath. So I kind of leave it to last minute to get a shirt underneath. Then I go to the store, I'm like, all right, she need to go black shirt underneath or something. I'm like, I don't know what color, whatever. I put on every shirt. They're all like bunching up because I'm too jacked for the jacket. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, the, so like the, do you start to think maybe I do have to go tank top? <laughs> so I start going, yo, I might have to go tank. <laughs> and then the guy at the store is like, you might have, if you want to wear this, you might have to go tank. And then he's like, yo, let me bring, this is the day before. He's like, let me bring you some other options of what to wear. And he brings me like a green blazer. I was like, bro, I can't tell the jokes that I wear dressing like a fucking librarian okay <laughs> you know like i i need to wear this jacket and it needs to fit this way so we need to make this happen <laughs> so i go to h&m i go to zara i go to every store like that you would think mm. sells just like a plain black shirt and i'm just trying them on under this jacket and they're all bunching up and then i find one shirt at bloomingdale's but like, theory that's called <laughs> it's a 75 dollar t-shirt okay of course it is and it's called what the fuck was it called some version of like perfect fit okay <laughs> you know what i mean like where it's like this thing is gonna just like be a glove you know yeah, yeah. and it's i put it on and it's the only shirt that's that didn't that didn't punch and it was the hardest part of my whole outfit was the black t-shirt underneath <laughs> and i'm doing this myself I live 3,000 miles away from, like, my parents, like, my family, my, you know? My parents. 
<laughs> mom, I need help. Dude, I never felt more like, mom, <laughs> I need you to dress me, you know? <laughs> anyway, very Ambrosian look, you know what I mean? But boy, oh boy, it's crazy because like when you're, you know, when you're, you you know, it's wrestling, baby. Yeah. I watch these, some of these standups, they go on TV and you're like, I get it. Their thought process is like, I'm not going to dress different. I want to be like me, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, my brain's like, yo, you're a wrestler, you yeah. know? You know, we see these wrestlers who are like, they kind of just wear generic shit. And you're like, whatever. Like, you know, there's not like, I'm like, no, yeah, you gotta like, you gotta like, you gotta fucking look good, baby, for the camera. You know? I, I, I said it, it was like a little ode to like uh, dice. I felt a little dice in there too. It was dice. Know? That's why. So I tried on a couple of the like biker jackets. Yeah. You know? And I was like, or let's call it, you know, for the marks, Finn Balor jackets. Yeah. yeah. I, um, <laughs> You know what I mean? I tried on a couple of those, and I'm like, I, I, I knew in my mind, I was like, I want to do something that's not exactly dice. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not trying to be derivative because I look too much like him. I mean, not that we look so much alike, but I look too much like him where it's like, yeah, people are just going to go dice. You know what I mean? But if you say like, oh, it's an homage, like, that's fine. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's the debut of me doing comedy in leather, and it's on TV. <laughs> Not, not true. I've done characters in leather because I've played dice before. But yeah, anyway, it's funny you bring out the wardrobe malfunction. Let's talk about, let's talk about wrestling. Let's go. I'm ready to talk wrestling. You ready I'm to talk ready. wrestling? Yeah. Let's go. Let's, actually, I think we, this is long overdue, but we should do it. Didn't hear that. <laughs> let's, let's, didn't you hear a bell? No, nothing. It'll be in my recording, not yours then. That's fine. Okay. Uh, I wonder why. But anyway, okay. I heard something, like I heard something trying to play. We got to acknowledge. Roman Reigns, the, 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 the tribal chief, but I think more than that, we should we have to acknowledge the honorary use. I mean, right. the dude causing getting the most attention in pro wrestling right now, at least from the uh, mark perspective, like you know, from 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 the, the from the mark, seems to be fucking Sami Zayn, who is we've said it on the last episode, but he is on a he's on a hell of a run with this blood, bloodline shit. He's making that stuff 20 times more interesting, you know? Truly, truly incredible work. I mean, I'm not a professional actor, but, I mean, like, the guy's incredible, right? Like, he's a really good actor, I think. Like, I think he, like, understands how to... It's interesting. There's there's a lot of guys in, in, in professional wrestling, like the Alistair Blacks, and like uh, I think Seth also does a lot of it too, and Kevin Owens, but they're very much in tune to long term storytelling, you know, like yes. things that happened eight years ago, carry on throughout, and they leave you little rabbit clues all along the way until they get to these big, these big moments, and then you start to think back and realize all the things that have happened. And man, oh man, I think Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are the best at it, dude. Like. They are truly just fucking incredible. Like this friendship and the rivalry and now with the bloodline and war games and what what's coming up next. It looks like Kevin Owens is going to like, you know, come through the, the, the bloodline to get back to Roman, you know? So it's, I'm just, it's it pumped to see, like, it's really cool to see this right now in professional wrestling, deep rooted, long-term storytelling, you know? And, Here's here's the here's what I'm I'm gonna say is gonna is a positive for AEW now is that we're gonna get that with MJF. He talked about that, right? He said I'm yeah. all defending this title every week, and you, now you're gonna get that with AEW too, which is good because now you're gonna they're gonna focus back into the storytelling, which is where Roman and the Bloodline, and now especially with Sammy, have shined so much is because every week you're tuning in to see what's next, you know. Like, you wanted to know what was going to happen next with Jay and, and Sammy. You wanted to, you, you know, you love seeing the handshake. Now you're wondering what's going on with Solo. And now Roman, like, what is he, how does he feel, you know, like, what's going on? So it's like, that's television, you know? Like, it's the heart and soul of professional wrestling. And I truly believe guys like Sami Zayn and why the Triple H taking over and those guys still being there. Even look at, like, Finn Balor and AJ Styles and, like, you know, their stables, they have women in their stables. And like, 
it's it's just it's 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 a very very cool it's weird man because a couple weeks ago i was like "Eh." (laughs) but both those pay-per-views came full gear i thought was awesome and uh survivor series i thought was great too so like wild that we're going to be going into royal rumble next and guys like cody are going to be coming back and oh man i I forgot about cody it's just crazy dude when cody comes back i saw i saw a list of aw wrestlers that they signed this year and i think like like they even had wardlow in there but that doesn't really count because wardlow's always been but i was like all those wrestlers put together and i'm like not trying to slight anybody but like yeah. doesn't even really equate to the relevance of Cody in WWE in that like short run that he had before he got injured, you know, like so massive. And now he's going to come back. WWE's about to explode. 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 <laughs> I, uh, sheets. No, I was even the sheet. No, 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 I was listening to you, but I was listening to the sheets here. Cause I, I was trying to get a look at the new MJF title. Oh yeah, I I didn't get to really, like see it up close, you know, but it's the same title. They just put the Burberry strap, right? Yeah, I I think I well, first of all, I was I was like trying to figure out like does Burberry but, like is Burberry cool with this? Like I'm assuming they got to get that approved, right? Well, a couple things because this is actually why I brought it up because the first time I saw it, it you can't really see the Burberry, am I right? Yeah. Like it kind of uh-huh. it's like it, right? Like it doesn't look at all like a Burberry pattern. Am I wrong? It's very like it feels faded. It's not like it's like faint. Enough. Like they yeah, got like, like a gloss over it. It should be the leather should be like like feels like like, it's like the they WWE did a bad like job, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. It's like they did a bad job. Cuz he's allowed to wear a Burberry scarf on television, right? I guess so. I I always wondered if that was like a real one or if like the pattern was like slightly different so he got away with it, you know. Because yeah, they wouldn't let me wear the cow logo. I mean, he's calling kinda... it the big Burberry belt. Yeah. If you can't yeah, wear Bur- a cow logo on court, how can he make a fucking Burberry belt? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Burberry MJF trademark. Let's just, I don't know. I don't know if that's what to Google, but uh, let's see. If it, does does AEW pay Burberry for brand licensing? Uh, I don't know why I think that Reddit's going to have the correct answer on this. But if we're deep in the sheets right now, I mean, like, let's go. <laughs> if we're in the sheets, let's see. Maybe we'll find something. Maybe we'll find something that we'll just choose to believe. What do you think? We should find something to just choose to believe about this. I love it. I think that's how the, uh, the internet works now. Are you playing the cage sound? Yeah. Like, how, apparently, I'm wrong. Does AEW pay for that? Oh. Right here, I'm in the comments here. I don't know why I think I'm getting the correct answer here, but I did. Clothing company usually enjoy free promotion. <laughs> Dude, these are people just back What do I hear playing? The cage. You don't hear the cage? Gabba Gabba Wee. I heard Gabba Wee. Oh, wow. I guess maybe that sound effect's low. Anyway, I don't know. It, it, you know, but, you know, I don't think it, I like the promotion of it is like, I don't know. I, they. <laughs> I'm, I don't have really the answer to that, but I can't imagine Burberry's cool with this, you know, just because this is ne- network television. Like, it's good promotion, but well, not network television. It's, it's cable television, but it, but wouldn't they want to get paid? Like, they should get a little money here. You know what I mean? That's their logo. Because yeah, it's not like, and, first off, and have wrestling fans in, are buying Burberry. No, and and have an input in how it looks. I'm, I'm pretty sure the, the replica, like, they sell MJF scarves. But they're not Burberry, you know. They're just like imitations. Yeah, I mean, I I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. I There's a lot of it. I don't yeah. know. It's crazy you can wear that pattern on TV. But I know, like the Apple logo, you know, this was like very recently, in the past like five years. The Apple logo, you you'll see it on computers. They said it's fine for all TV. You're allowed to do it, you know. So like for a while, you'd see those like circles over yeah. the Apple logo on computers, you know, to block it. And then Apple was kind of like, hey, like they, it, they probably had like a long overdue conversation, which was like, hey, guys, no one's going to pay us to show the Apple on the computer. Yeah, it brings nothing to the story of what they're making. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we could literally get 
free advertising in uh-huh. a movie. You know, you see it in so. that Samsung commercial with the uh, the like the the flip uh, the clothes like phone, the flip phone. You know, right? And then like the girls like holding her Apple phone. I'm like, oh, and it's funny because that dawned on me the other day. I was like, oh, I know. You can show Apple. Know. You can show the Apple logo now. Look at that. Yeah, uh, I think also you can show a Nike swoosh. I, wasn't it uh, like back in the day you couldn't like Pepsi couldn't show like Coke and they can and like they always called it like yeah. cola or something like uh, like a RC brand or whatever. Uh too low, I gotta pee again. But uh uh uh, uh I'm reading here you I'm gonna give you something to discuss, but I'm reading here that uh Moxley uh that uh, uh Regal is a uh, WWE bound. Do you oh. see that? Yes. Well, his contract's so, up in January, so... Yeah, 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 and probably Triple H is like, well, let's get him back, right? For well, something you just- know, yeah, I, I mean, I, when Mox told him to leave, I honestly thought he was like, he was like, all right, I, I'm I'm done. I did my job here, you know? Like, he, he, I thought, I even if it's this short of a run or for the full year, you know, whatever. But uh, when he came back this week, I was actually kind of pissed. I was like, yeah, Mox told him to leave. But then they like covered it up with being like, oh, Mox was kicked out. So he's like Regal snuck in or whatever. So I'm like, yeah. all right, that's cool. And then MJF knocked him out. And then I was like, oh, that was damn. slick. Not only was that slick, that was such a fucking <laughs> awesome MJF move. Because if he's going to be like the dirtiest, oh. dirtiest player in the game, to oh, turn yeah. on the guy who just won you the title like the first second. With the brass that you knuckles. can. Yeah, it was so fucking good. He's like, you know, uh, and it, when he hit him right in the back of the head like that, that was fucking dope. Um, all right, so I got to pee really bad. You, 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 I'll you, talk you. about that moment. Talk I, uh, go. I, that moment is very interesting because I honestly believe that professional wrestling gets so freaking slighted when it comes to Emmy Nas because if there's like best dramatic scene, like you can't tell me old man William getting uh, hit over the head with his brass knuckles and collapsing like that and then not moving. Like he never moved. I think at one time the announcer said that they, that he like moved his leg when they were taking him out of the ring, but he legit did not move. He was stone cold. Like playing dead, incredibly, never opened his eyes. Somehow, had fake blood in his mouth. How did you do that? I, I was just blown away. I, I thought the announcer sold it. I, I, that whole segment was one of the best segments in AEW history, hands down. I think I, I, I knew putting the title on MJF was the right decision. Uh, it's just, it's just, it's gonna put AEW back on the map. He's out there saying Nick Khan's name and Tripp's name. And yeah, I just I just love everything about the dude, man. He's just so he's such a good professional wrestler. He's such a good heel. He's got the 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 pinstripes that say better than you. I'm gonna save this for when Dan comes back. But okay, he's got the pinstripes that say better than you. Remind me on that point. I'll come back to that. I'm asking you to remind me, and you guys aren't listening. That's good. That's the weed talking. Awesome. Cool, um, but yeah, I love it. I, I, I thought I thought Full Gear was great. I know I've been hard on AEW recently, but um, I thought I was getting a little disappointed this week because it felt like they were like trying to tell stories post Full Gear, and then they switched it up with Moxley coming out, and then the Hangman stuff. I'm like, this is kind of weird that they're going back to this, and then, um, and then Regal came out, and I, then I was like. I almost got pissed. I was like, why is Regal here? He's, Moxley told him to go away. That makes Moxley look weak. But, uh, all right, he's back. Big guy's back. Yo. Yo. All just right, got a really so, nice message from the people, uh, Corden, the executive producer. Yes. Just saying you had a great set. It was really, you know, sorry, that just happened while I was peeing. Uh, Ooh. What's up, bro? What were we talking about? Let's. Uh, I don't want to talk about that. We're talking wrestling. I'm in right. wrestling zone. Um, I have... All right, this is like a, a conspiracy theory, but you ready to fucking tiptoe with me, bro? I'm ready to tiptoe with you. I'm drinking the snake oil, by the way. Ooh, you know, I love it. Which is so I'm... dumb because it's 9 p.m. and like this means I'm not going to sleep. Sick. You'll be fine. I 
think that there is something going on with MJF and Conor McGregor. Okay, did you see this? Bet the his his suit with the pinstripes. Ooh, Conor McGregor is so ready for wrestling, right? Okay, so here you go. Yeah. Right? Let me break. Let me let me let me give you a little history tour of what I'm seeing. Wow, so this is what made me spark spark my brain. I love like, where you're going here. I'm looking at MJF and I'm like, what's this suit? suits say those aren't pinstripes i thought they were pinstripes i'm like oh my god connor used to wear the, the he had the uh fuck you pinstripes at the press conference that one time with the may uh, at the mayweather press conference and i'm like oh my god better it says better than you he's trolling connor and then recently mjf went on uh part of my take barstool podcast and talk some talk some trash and Patty the Batty, who's a UFC fighter, called out MJF. And in the mix of that, Connor got involved. So oh. I think, and I'm, I truly, truly believe this. You may not be a Conor McGregor fan, but I'm telling you. I'm a Conor McGregor fan. Right, no, no, I'm not saying you. I'm telling the, oh. the listeners. Some of you may not be. The I'm folks. I'm telling the folks. you right now. If. If MJF is trying to lure Conor McGregor in, he's the smartest fucking human being in the whole entire world. Conor McGregor can't go to WWE because Jake, because uh, Logan Paul's there and Jake Paul are there, so that won't work because that actually might end in an actual war. And we've seen what Conor McGregor would do backstage, and he doesn't care. Although the toxic personality, we've seen what happened with CM Punk being in AW, but I think Conor McGregor and MJF would be. One of the sickest fucking things I've ever seen, ever. It would I mean, be of course, legendary. And I think Connor's if if Connor's trying to get involved, he should go to Tony Khan. I think they should have a sit down. I think they should talk about it. I think MJF should be involved. And I I think Connor should ask for for a, a you know give him like that short term you know that Brock contract like uh, limited appearances. Oh, you know, you don't, he's not going to wrestle until the pay-per-view, like f whatever, uh, revolution. What is it called? Revolution, uh, in February, wait till fucking revolution in February, have him wrestle MJF and promote the shit out of it. They'll sell so many fucking pay-per-views. They can sell a stadium for that. Oh yeah. That, um, uh, that, I mean, that would be fucking cool. I mean, do you <laughs> It feels like Connor would go to WWE. Come on, come though, on, no? come on! Listen, dude, you don't, you don't, you don't. The money's in WWE, but I mean, you, you know, don't. He can't go there. He can't go there. He can't go there with Logan Paul. There. That's well, not why can't he go there with Logan Paul? Though? Why? They have, they have him and Jake Paul have big time beef. Like, they, I don't think that means they will do it. If there's money to be made, there's money to be made. Mm. That's not a reason that yeah, they definitely wouldn't work. I mean, and they can work what separate. What I'm saying like, is, is that that angle. could be like a CM Punk like backstage situation, like where there will be like altercations and conflict. You don't want that. He's not going to go there. He should go you don't know what I want. You don't want that. <laughs> you know I want that. What made you text me the other day and you were like, "Yo, maybe CM Punk is coming back." Um. What made me? What made me text you that? I think during oh, the match. So during the match, they in Chicago, the Bucks and Kenny like trolled Punk. They did a fucking. Uh, uh, he uh, they messed up the Buckshot Larry and Matt messed up the Buckshot Larry to. Like, oh yeah, Punk. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. Kenny did a go to sleep, and then like led the chant and like fuck CM Punk chants or whatever shit. So it's like, I mean, they and then right before that. Kenny made like a tweet saying like we don't want like anybody to choose sides or like feel like like it's not like that like or something and then they went out and did that in Chicago so I'm just like I'm like these guys you know can carry on my way like this I um we uh. I just, yeah, I, we'll see where they go with that. I mean, I want to jump over to War Games for a sec. I was just reading real quick here. before you go there. Oh yeah, I thought Kenny had great pants last night. Finally, I noticed that like right away. Were those the rewears or were those new? I don't. They I kinda, think they were they, new. 
They kind of look like the ones been. he yeah. wore. He wore one similar at All Out, like when he. I, I like them. We, I like them. When he wrestled Christian Cage, he wore very good pants. You remember that? I think that was All Out last year, maybe. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh. Anyway, um, War Games was a pretty fucking good time. Uh, the men's war game match was outstanding, right? Theater. Well, how good was that? Theater in, a, so in, good. in two rings and a cage, man. I mean, like, violent, fucking fun. That that ending was one of the coolest things I've seen in, in wrestling in a while. Like, it was just so, like, you don't know what, I know because you don't know what's going to happen. So, like, how's this all going to play out? Is Sammy going to cost him? Is Sammy gonna turn on you know like do against Kevin? I I just loved it, man. I thought it was awesome. The 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 the, the KO Sammy story that was perfectly told, and then you have um, Jay and Sammy hugging at the end too. Yes, like you know, like it's and, fun. and it keeps it going still too. Like yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and it was the best use of a War Games match I'd ever seen. Because you know, I'm not a War Games fan, Matt Mark. Mm-hmm. My problem with War Games has always been that it's a little like, um. It's almost like an improv when you're like the forms there for you, uh, you know, like uh, um, what's the expression I'm trying to say? Like you're there for the form over the form being there for you, you know? So it's a little bit like we have to surf war games, meaning we need teams of four and yeah. they all, you know, and you're like, and, and you're kind I'm, of shoehorning. Yep. Yeah. You're, you're shoehorning feuds into this like match that has to happen, you know? And my, my, and, 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 and so like, like, for example, something I didn't like was like, it was like the Viking Raiders. And it's like, now they're with Ricochet. Hey, you remember that? Yeah. And they all dress like with war paint and stuff. Just you're like, okay, like fine. It makes it like, not why I watch wrestling. That makes it more of just like, oh, here's a cool match, you know? And then I'll just watch sports, you know? So what I'm saying is that that, that, it's a minor beef because obviously I can get past it and just enjoy the match for being like a fun spectacle and dangerous and hardcore, you know, so like I can enjoy it in that way. But when you uh, when if you approach war games by being like, hey. This match is going to happen and like, where's your allegiance within it? Then that's a cool way to approach it, you know? It's like war games is a coming and like where do you stand? <laughs> That's cool as opposed to being like war games is here, let's make some teams. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Yep. So I like that. They did a really nice job of building this where it's like, okay, there was feuds in there. We knew obviously some spots were just like had to be filler, but then they like like KO was a filler plug in, but tied in perfectly with the K with the yep. with the Sammy thing. So it was like really in that way, it was really uh, 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 nice. The women's match was really good. Yeah. But it didn't have what the men's match had. Well, I, I think what, what I think what the best part for the women's match was is that it kind of just, like, established the division. You know, like, yeah, you look at that. You look at you look at that War Games match. I mean, Bianca Belair is so far beyond a superstar. It's insane. It's fucking wild, dude. Becky, I think I think we're entering Becky's best era of her career right now. I think we're on the precipice of like this is the Becky Lynch, the man. You know, like this is the the best version of her that we're that we're going to see and it's going to be fucking legendary. She's in the crowd you know, she's well, that's like, the main takeaway for the main takeaway from that match was reestablishing the dominance of Becky Lynch. Right. Hey, listen. And, and, and you know what? Look at Bailey. Bailey comes out. She's looking awesome, too. Now, like, you know, they, they got that. They, they, there's a deep rooted history there. There's storyline. There's like so much going on. You got Alexa Bliss, possibly, you know, whatever's, go- you know, it's like it's it's just so cool. The tag team division can get back on track. You know, it's like. Damn, man, there's there's just a lot of talent over there. And that still doesn't include Charlotte Flair. It still doesn't include Sasha Banks. It still doesn't include Naomi. So, like, if the, all three of those wrestlers come back and go to SmackDown and somehow Ronda Rousey, like, just maybe goes on her farm for a little bit more, you know? Right. <laughs> I mean, Ronda is so tough because... Even when they give her good booking, she just can't fucking act like at all. Yeah, and like 
the stuff with Shayna should be awesome, but it's just not. You know? It's like uh, it's definitely uh better than whatever she was doing on her own. She can't she can't be out there by herself. But like she doesn't yeah. she doesn't help Shayna in any way out there. Shayna's yeah, doing just, a lot of leg work to make that work. And it's 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 like they'll have like a segment where you're like, oh, this is gonna be cool. It's like Shayna like pummeling like who Ronda's opponent's gonna be, and then she's gotta stand there just being like, ha ha ha, and it's like just somehow ends up being like awkward, and it's just like a simple beatdown segment, you know? It's so simple. But I, I right? love I love Ronda. That's like the crazy thing. Well, that's the thing. A, yeah, it's all right there. The writing's on the wall. Like right. they need a manager. They need someone to talk for them. They should be yeah. the most dangerous women in WWE. And you don't want to fuck with them because they'll fucking like break your limbs, literally. Like, and you need someone who's going to convey that. And they need honestly like a Raquel Gonzalez with them, like a huge big threat, like like the diesel of like NWO kind of, you know, kind of thing. Uh they just they just need a mic person desperately, like so bad because they're so talented and they can be so, made to be such bigger threats. But we don't see at, at all in the women's division, right? There's no women. There's no managers for the women, right? I don't even think so. Not, not that I can think of on WWE TV so right like, now. So, like, you know? Yeah. It, uh, shit, I forgot my point. What were you talking about? Uh, War Games. Uh-huh. Women's War Games match. Uh Bianca. Oh, I want to. Uh, well, I forgot what I was going to talk about, but I don't care. Thank I want to jump to this Austin Theory match, which I thought was awesome. Yes. Um, which one? I, the, him winning the U.S. title. Survivor Series, yeah. The Survivor Series match. Uh, uh, I love taking that strap off Rollins because this time of year, we want Rollins to be, uh, we want Rollins to be, well, I mean, to be honest, you don't have to take it off of him because it's the U.S. title. But I like them establishing the U.S. title as meaningful, so I like keeping that momentum going, yeah. but also taking it off Seth, so that Seth can potentially get this Cody feud going again. Probably is is my guess where they're going to end up going, because I think The Rock is going to wrestle Roman. I don't think he can turn that down. Well, here is something I heard. You ready for this, Dan? Yeah. There are rumors swirling that Roman Reigns might possibly defend both both titles and main event them one each night. Okay, so we have talked about this a lot of times. Um, I was having a stoner brain, you know. I was like, we talked about this. I think Dan's like idea was to have Roman main event both nights. Oh yeah, I talked about doing this. Or defend Many. the title. Not necessarily has to be main event both nights, but he's definitely going to main event one. But I just foresee whatever, whoever it is that's facing him. In either or. I mean, listen, here you go. You you have Seth win the Rumble or or, or whatever, yeah. you know, like, uh, and then Rock challenges him for the other one. And then you're going to have a Money in the Bank ladder match, right? Uh, that night, too. You know, like, or Cody wins the Rumble and Cody wins at WrestleMania and gets his moment and then Seth wins the briefcase and then Seth cashes in again and steals Cody's moment. Like, man, there's just so many ways you can go. It's, it's, I, I yeah. truly, I honestly, I'm going to make a prediction here. I'm going to go out on the limb and say this Royal Rumble, you can almost start it now, but I'm going to say this Royal Rumble to Mania season, which is also known as Rain season is going to be, I think, one of the best stretches we've seen. And for a very long time, it's been very wonky. After the Rumble, they never know what the fuck to do. And they got some stuff mixed in in between there. I think, what, Elimination Chamber happens, right? Uh, uh, I think they just, got rid of Fastlane. There's no Fastlane. There's Chamber, though. But there's Chamber I, in Montreal, they, too, right? There might be a Saudi show, you know? Is there a yeah, WrestleMania 39. Um, so just 2023 look, WWE papers. Here, so I'm going to here we stand and deliver. 
Yeah, Chamber. So this is gonna be a Chamber February eighteenth, twenty twenty three. And then then it's nothing until be... Mania. Oh my god! Nothing in March. No. It's called No Escape in Germany, by the way. You know about that? What? Because the translation is like has like Holocaust connotation, like Chamber. Uh, I, think, I, mean, uh, I think that's actually true. So in yeah. Germany, they call it No Escape. Uh, which... I don't like that. What? Oh, kind of like was it, uh, no escape is better than Saint Colin of the Chamber in Germany, right? I mean, I, mean, I, I guess think that I heard that. Ways. That's right. Uh, but anyway, is... um, it feels like something I made up. But what what I know something like that's so non like that feels too specific for me to make up, right? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I thought you were just reading that right now. No, no, no. I know it's it's. Uh, <laughs> I know it's that. Yeah, because of World War Two. Yeah. 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 Um. Anyway, and there's uh, nothing in between, nothing in March. Oh my God, that is so crazy. What? That is so crazy. Anyway, yeah, there's so it goes Royal Rumble and then it goes Elimination Chamber. So there's the two of those, and there's another stand and deliver, by the way, which is on April 1st. That's and they're doing NXT weekend. again. I wonder if that's going to be it. Wow, so that's interesting. So there's going to be a, a nice so build that's to Saturday. Mania. So they're doing that same thing again, like Saturday during the 1 p.m. start time. They're doing that same thing for NXT this year. Weird. L- anyway. LA. LA. It's going to be in the Crypto.com arena. What was that? Anyway, so we are talking about uh, Mania, like t- Mania speculation with The Rock. So, yeah, if he defends the titles two nights, which feels like a cool idea, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, If The Rock would be the second night main, right? Yeah. So, I mean, my guess, to be honest, is that I think they're going to have Roman drop one of the titles, is what I think. You know, because I think Roman's going to because the, the, here's here's the problem with it. I think Roman might drop the titles even before that rock match, you know, because I think Roman's going to start transitioning to Hollywood more. And I think that keeping those titles on him, you know, is going to fuck with that a little bit. Well, yeah, not keeping both, but keeping one is fine. I think I think it's I mean, if he keeps well, the, the issue that... is that if, if he wrestles the rock, it's like he has to beat the rock. Obviously, yeah, yeah. Right? And then he gets to keep the one title. You know, right, so he keep one title. We need whatever one title. he has the longest reign with. You know, that's the one he keeps, so he can continue that long reign of being that champion for that long. You know, so you still have that. He's still the head of the table. You know, like you get like that. Yeah, I agree with that. Anyway, uh, we'll see where that goes. I want to jump to a couple of predictions I have, which is I'm predicting KO Stone Cold two at at this mania. Really? Yeah. I think they're just gonna run it again. I think it was I a big I saw success. Something else uh, that uh, Stone Cold was beefing with somebody else. I know he's working out like crazy. But, he's uh, been working out like a lunatic, and I feel like he had such a fucking good time. And he's probably like, "Yo, I can get one more in the hopper there, and then do it on the trunks this time. Do a real match. You know what I mean?" Mm. Well, he's probably gonna be in San Antonio for Royal Rumble, so maybe ah. Dude. I don't think he'll win the Rumble. Not win the Rumble, Rumble, but maybe imagine yeah. if he. If he was in it, hand out a couple stunners. That's actually not a bad spot for it. It'll be fun, but I don't think he's going to do it. It's not a bad idea, but I don't think he's going to do it. Anyway, I was predicting that, but you think. Yeah, you're saying Cody Roman could be like they could do something like that. I don't know. I think I think Cody's going to win the Rumble. Right. Um. But then how do you oh shit, I don't even know what you do, man. I have no idea what you do here. With the rock, the rock Roman. Like the rock Roman just feels like you drop what you do is you drop you drop you drop the titles off him because it's like that that match so does not need a title, you know? Yeah, but I wanted to have the titles personally because I just I love The Rock Max. ain't doing more than one match. So there's no there's no right. reason why the title and like and the rock beating Roman the Rock being Roman in a one-on-one match with, like, I think it does need the title because the title will continue, like, Roman's legacy, you know? Like, him winning just to beat him in a fight and he's got nothing, he's got no throne now because he's not the champ. 
kind of makes it irrelevant. It's just like, okay, well, I beat him. I'm, but he's not the head of the table because he doesn't. he's not even the fucking champ, you know? So, like, I think he right. needs a title. I think he needs to have the title, and he, he needs to beat The Rock. Just uh, The Rock ain't coming back from more than anything else past this. He's so fucking gone. He's out there making YouTube posts every day about how great his life is. He, this is he'll come back. He'll wrestle him. It'll be awesome. All right. Whatever you say. Hey, whatever. So what are you doing with what are you doing with Cody? I was saying Cody win the Rumble. Oh yeah, you're saying Cody win the Rumble, but then oh, and you're saying do Night One Roman Cody. Okay, but here's the deal. So then, what do you do with Seth? You go set do a Seth Theory Mania. No, uh, I think or maybe all those guys are in like the Money in the Bank ladder match or something like that. Oh, right? you're saying right, 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 right. Or like you know whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's gonna be. I have no idea what to see. It's gonna be interesting. You also don't know who might be added in like to the roster soon, and like people coming back, and like. You know, I think they're like, gonna do a Sheamus Gunther rematch at Mania. You know, that'd be wild because that that was just such a big hit. You know, like have those guys do number two you know it'll be and it would be cool to see if like Sheamus cools off with an IC title for a little bit and then makes his push like just like right before Wrestlemania you know yeah so then he can get that match and then get they need to have Sheamus win that title at Wrestlemania that that will give Sheamus all the titles Is he, oh he's never had he'd be a Grand Slam winner never been an IC champ he's won oh. the money in the bank briefcase the heavyweight the U.S. tag team. He's never won the IC. Wild. He's won the Royal Rumble? Yes or no? Is that true? Sheamus did. I think he did win the Royal Yeah, I th- I'm 90% sure he did. I don't remember Sheamus. Did he I think he did win the Royal Rumble. Hold on. I bet he won like 2000. 2000- 2009 was Alberto Del Rio, I think. So it's going to be. If he I don't think he won time. because I don't think he ever had a fucking. He won the Royal Rumble in 2012. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's so crazy. He won in 2012. Then, and then is that when he wrestled Daniel Bryan? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, here, I'm watching the clip. I don't remember this at all. Here. So... Oh, he squashed Daniel Bryan, didn't he? Yeah, I'm saying he Daniel is that when he 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 wrestled it was an 18 second Daniel Bryan win, but did people like when Sheamus won the Royal Rumble? That's 2012. That's 10 years ago. That's not. That's like so much more recent than I expected. Oh, there's Ziggler. Okay, let's say. Oh my God, it's in ring here. It's Ziggler, Miz, Cody, Kofi. What a group. Oh, they went kind of nuts for Sheamus. Yeah, I mean, Sheamus. Dude. Yeah, Sheamus won. Cool. Yeah, that's when he had the... Damn, man, it's crazy. I don't even remember that. I knew he won one just because I just knew that factoid, but I was like, yeah. I mean, exciting stuff happening. It's So so. how do we make AEW great again? You know? I think we're, where, I where think we're they... ready. I think we're ready on the way. First of all, I'm, I'm starting to see some things, all right? I, I want to I wanna give... I want to give some kudos out back to AEW. I think okay. there's some genuine efforts being made. First, a couple things I've noticed that are good. I think Tony's starting to listen to me or see my tweets or something. One, full gear stage, didn't have the tunnels. Loved it. So great. Yeah. Different stage. I thought the design was cool. I thought they made the entrances better because I was watching Dynamite last night and I don't think the tunnels even matter anymore. There were guys coming out. Daniel Bryan came out of the heel tunnel. Alex Aberhentes came out of the fucking face tunnel and he's giving a hammer out. So I don't think the tunnels matter anymore. Um, I honestly would like to see those go away, but I would rather them stay for now as long as they just stay on Dynamite and Rampage or whatever. Uh, two, Jay Cardgill on, uh, on uh, TNT now. Uh, I mean, on Wednesdays now. You know, the TBS champ is on TBS. Right. And looking like literally a million bucks. And Jade? that's that's huge. Do you, you see know, her that's... actual her money outfit? Yeah. Sick. I mean, I watched it last night. Did you see it? It was awesome. Yeah. And she's... also, by the way, just before I forget to say, I normally am a knock 
cosplay, but her like Lionel uh cosplay looked fucking awesome. Yeah, dude. That thing was it, wild. she pulled that shit off to a point where I go like that didn't bother me at all. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, like th- Thundercat. I think she's just on fire. I think she's an absolute superstar. I love seeing her coming out there and getting mic time. I thought, you know, AEW cheaps it up and doesn't make it look good. Like they they should be better producing those kind of segments for her to make it look awesome. But um there's just a lot of a lot of really good things happen. I you know, I I think I think that oh, and then of course MJF being champion. I mean, this is a huge transition for them. He's out there saying Triple H's name, saying Nick Khan's name. He's he's already scheming. He's he's saying that he's, he's not going to challenge, like defend yeah. the title a lot. Uh, you know, after Winter's coming against Ricky Starks, I guess he's going to fucking chill for a little bit. You know, like I I think it's just the right decision that he was. See, it was such such an interesting time because. He was starting to be over. So people were being like, how do you have this guy that's so beloved by the fans now face anybody like as a, as a, a, like he's like a face. People like him. And then he goes and does something like this. And now everybody is going to be, he's going to be the fucking biggest heel in the, in the industry. And he probably is already, but uh, uh, I think AEW is in a good, this is a good transition period for him. They have final battle coming up with ROH. I hope after that, there's a little bit of a better plan because they need to get the heart and soul of AEW back. I, I think the, I think the elite think they know what they're doing, but they're, this stuff is not working for me. And that's my, that's my biggest thing for them. They're having fun. I'm glad they're having fun, but I don't know, man. I think they, I don't I know, a lot they, of the stuff they do is kind of lame. I mean, I, I find them to, you know, not be evolving like you know um like creatively like you know um and they're not grabbing attention in that same way and it's a lot of like old it's just you know i saw kenny cutting a promo after they went off the air and i, I like that more than anything he's doing on there you know well like he's uh, still he, they were still on the air at the end of the show actually and he gags in the mic which was interesting uh that was on there well i saw that online uh, I'm, I'm not so sure. out of it this week because I was doing all this other shit, but I don't know what heads or tails. I don't know, man. I just I need that Kenny Omega, you know, like when he's around the Bucks, it's just not the same, you know. Like remember when Kenny was champ, he wasn't really, he didn't really have the Bucks for like a, a, a beginning part of it, right? Bucks were gone. Didn't like he they get into beef and he turned on them and stuff. God, I when remember. where didn't the elite like weren't weren't like together he wasn't with them when he was the champion really yeah that's what i'm saying yeah, so like yeah, that's it yo damn uh, oh shit i was just watching uh i was looking at kenny's pants just now they look real good yeah real good they look real good i i mean look I think there's definitely a lot of good shit happen at AEW right now. I, I, I when I was watching the clips, I was watching. I liked it. you. Know, you were talking about Samoa Joe, the Wardlow thing. Like that's fucking dope. I like just seeing Samoa Joe in general. Like I think he's like one of their biggest commodities. So I don't know why. Like he he's the he's like you know when you have a wrestler who was someone they think WWE was like not using correctly, just use him correctly. You know. Yeah. It's kind of almost like just and just be like, hey, here's where you can come to like actually do your shit, you know. So when they do stuff like that, it's good. I think there's more clarity with that, with the, with how the ROH is, you know. It, it, you're just seeing Samoa Joe be strong, and I'm just kind of forgetting the ROH stuff. You know what yeah. I mean? Well, it's good. And then we're just watching. He, it's a TNT title match too. So, and I also like yeah. the narrative that right. he's like, it's like those he has both TV titles, so he's like the king of TV. He called himself too. It's like, man, Samoa Joe, you're a fucking genius, dude. That's so smart, you know? Yeah, he said the king of television is what he king called himself, television. right? It's like so cool. I dig that. Yeah. Um, this is my last question. Where? What's going on with Charlotte? Uh, last I heard, she just took personal time off. She was going through some but stuff. But they right? showed promos of her coming back, right? Did they? I'm not sure. No, like at like like a month ago or something. We were oh, like, talking about they, that. I think they did it at SummerSlam. It was after SummerSlam. Yeah, no, it was SummerSlam. And then she never came back, right? No. 
Because they teased the KO thing at SummerSlam, too. I remember I was there. Mm. Okay. Anyway, all good shit. This is probably one of the best Survivor Series in recent memory. Yeah. Because it was, you know, it was a good time. And, I mean, Jesus, I mean, <laughs> it's 12-1 right now, you know? The Rumble's, what, 128? So we're like a month and change. You know, we're like, you know, two, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm San Antonio. Going, I'm going. 100%. So we're getting into like the road to Mania already, and that Mania's going to be in LA. So this is very exciting. So right now it's like very cool stuff percolating, but it's going to get very fun very fast. You know, that's going to be. Watch out for the percolator. Awesome. Watch out for the Time percolator. For the percolator. Time for the per- anyway, I'm going to get out of here because I'm fucking dead. Yeah, um, me too. I need to go. This to was bed. my first day. It was kind of off, and it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't very off. Um, so I'm going to go try to get to bed kind of early, get back to the gym, get back on my routine. I ate like shit today because I was eating pretty good <sighs> to be on TV. But mm. uh, I'm going to put this up now. So this will be out like for most people. Oh, shit. Corden's coming on. Oh, shit. So right now, Corden is starting right now on the East Coast. Three hours from now. Yeah. East Coasters starting now. West Coasters, it'll start in three hours. I mean, most people, uh, I'll post a clip. Follow me on Instagram if you want to see at Dan Black Attack. You also, it'll be up on the Late Late Show's YouTube. They'll just post, like, the stand-up clip, and you can check it out, like it, be kind to it, please. Um, And, uh, you know, this is kind of nerve-wracking. And hell yeah. You got nothing to worry about. I know, but, you know, it's like, you know, this you're gonna is, like, have the, like, the I told most. You, you're going to have the, well, this is funny you say most. You're going to have the most. The, the first and the second most viral stand-up about co- professional wrestling. And even... Hell yeah. There's, there's no denying it. And even if it does half of the views that the first one did, it's number one and number two, baby. Hell yeah. So, uh, everybody, uh, I'm grateful for all the people, all, all you people. Hell I yeah, love man. you guys. But uh, everybody, keep watching James Corden and uh, <laughs> keep watching wrestling. Kisses. Cheers yeah, up. Bye. Record.